Hello, hello everyone. It is Jackie with Pocket of Preschool. I'm so glad you guys are here to join me tonight on this. So tonight we are talking all about our space theme. So I'm going to do a space theme this week and then next week with my classroom. So I'm here to show you all the activities in the Dramatic Play Center um, for that theme. And a little bit about my class. My class is a multi-age preschool. It is mixed ages, so it's three, four, and five-year-olds. Oh, and let me tell me what. Let me tell you about our Facebook group too, really quick. So I uh, made a Facebook group for just for all of us to talk all about packet of preschool um, things. So make sure you hop over there and just fill out a couple questions, and then I will approve you, and we can talk all about packet of preschool over there too. Um, and you can share photos, and you can. I, so everybody can see what you're doing and what they're doing and just get lots and lots of ideas and collaboration. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and flip the camera and I'm gonna walk around my classroom and kind of show you um, all of our space themed activities. All right, are you ready? So I'll go to the library summit first because I love, 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 love books. So for every theme, I, whoops, stepping on an activity. Um, every theme I change at my bookshelf. Um, and if you don't have a lot of classroom books, I got a lot of mine through Scholastic over the years, or um, Amazon, or um, I, when I first started teaching, I went to the public library every two weeks and just got books for that theme, and then turned them back in. Bookshelf. And then over here, here is my writing center. Oh, some of my stuff, oh, I have, I have some of the stuff on the other table. So I also have, um, at this time, for my space, I put black paper out because I have um, fun metallic crayons that they can write and draw with. So I try and put different writing tools out for different themes so it's not so stagnant and so boring. But there's some space paper and things like that. I wanted to find space stickers, but I couldn't find any. I guess I could put stars over there. Just thought of that just now. <laughs> okay, and then I have a space puzzle because I have puzzles in my library center because sometimes my um, friends don't want to do just letters. So I put puzzles in the library center too. I just found this one, it's a Melissa and Doug. It's just off Amazon probably. Or um, uh, Toys R Us has them too. That just goes right there. And then I have some space lacing cards from Target a couple of seasons ago. I put lacing cards in library a lot. And then these are my letter trace cards. So my friends this year really love dry erase markers. So they just use a dry erase marker and they trace the line, and then they erase it, or they can also use the stars to trace the line. So either way, they're doing great fine motor. And then there's a whole bunch of different types of lines in here. All kinds of different little alien lines. A couple of these are backwards. Yeah. So that, that, I have all that in my crate. And we have practiced a lot with dry erase markers since they love them this year. Um, so make sure you practice dry erase markers before you put them out in the center because they're kind of crazy. Um, and then I have gears out because spaceships and building and robots. So I just put out these gears. I got these off Amazon. And I, this is actually two sets of them. I think they were um, on sale a couple weeks ago. So for like 20 bucks or something. So I bought like two sets. So I can put the link for that up later too. And then let's go to art. So in art, I, I, do, I love Play-Doh trays. <laughs> um, so this Play-Doh tray, um, it's just black Play-Doh and I just made it. I took it out of the, the um, baggie. Usually I just have it in a big baggie right in the middle um, so it doesn't get all dried out. But I took it out so you guys could see. I just put some, some um, of that fine glitter in it. And maybe if nobody gets sick and it stays nice, I may, might be able to use it for Halloween too. I'll put it away for a couple weeks and bring it back out. So this is just some black Play-Doh. I did use a whole, um, I get the food coloring from Michael's and I used a whole container to get it this black. So yeah, to, make it, to get it really black, you need a lot of food coloring. And then just some star cookie cutters. And these are just some little alien erase, mini erasers from Target. And then I just have some stars so they can just kind of push them in and then pull them out. And then I have, I just made these with foil. Um, they're just little, moon rocks and they, they don't make the play-doh really they don't really get stuck in it so that's really fun and then these are just some marbles i had and they're pretending they're planets so it's just a fun little play-doh tray and a spatula and then um, i made some space goop 
So again, I just used more um, food coloring and just made some goop. It's just, I use M Elmer's glue. So I use the clear kind and then um, liquid starch. And it's just, and I added lots of sparkle. And these are just the, the sequins I found at um, Target in the Halloween section. So, And then this was our art activity for this week. I actually just put this um, tray um, right over there on that shelf where that empty spot is. And that way they can get it if they want to um, make this an art, as an art choice. And they just stamp the, um, the cookie cutter in the white paint and put it down. And cookie cutter is really great because they're using all those um, muscles to hold on to that cookie cutter. So they're using all those um, pincer grasps, all those fingers. So cookie cutter painting is really, really fun and really good for them too. And then um, I'm going to go on this side. Sorry, otherwise you'll be upside down. So today, and my kiddos this year are loving stars. So we're kind of doing a lot with stars this week. Um, we did constellations, even though... They can't, don't really understand what that is. I still tell them those really big words. So I just gave everybody just a couple sheets of star stickers. And for my little guys, I took off the border so they only had the stars on there because they were a little bit tricky to peel. And then I put out white crayons and gave them a piece of paper. And then they put the stars on and then they made some constellations. So it was really fun. Everybody did it at their own level. And some of them are just so much fun on those designs. I love that. So those are our constellations. And then we did um, one day. These are, these are, I usually have these in my writing center for the space theme. They're metallic crayons. They're just by Crayola. I think I found these at Michael's. And they show up really pretty on black paper. So they, we just, um, what we did first was I modeled how to draw circles and we just drew a whole bunch of circles all around the page and then this was mine I did obviously and then um, I, I went back and they um, I had them and then I modeled how to color in and then one of one of my friends said that we, we needed to make Saturn so they told me to draw rings around it and they wanted me to make a turn one of mine into a sun and then I stopped coloring and turned mine over and this is what some of them came out like so here's a Here's a, um, a pre-K friend, and then here is a three-year-old. So everybody did it at their own level, and it was really, really fun. And you can tell my three-year-old has a, a much lighter, much lighter pressure, and then my, my big guy, my pre-K friend, he's got appropriate pressure. So and that works too. So crayons are really fun for um, building that pressure too, or using the appropriate amount of pressure. And somebody asked, oh, what curriculum do I use? I make made up my own curriculum based on state standards and various national standards. Um, so my curriculum is in my TPT store. Um, and the, there's a link for that in the comments. <clears throat> and then in my math and literacy pack, there are patterns to make these cutie patootie name rockets. So I just put out, and we do this for small group, I just had out a basket um, with the squares. And I had a basket out with triangles and then the flames. And they first cut out, first thing they did was they wrote their letters for their name on the squares. And then they cut those out and then they made their rocket. Now my little guys, I write the letters on there and um, I write them in pencil and then they can trace them. That way everybody can be successful. But, um, and you can read their names too creative curriculum. Yeah, they use a lot of themes. Themes are really fun. That's what we do. So, and then here is a lacing set. I don't, we haven't done this yet, um, but I'm going to have everybody, my, my, my one little man is in kindergarten and he made a sample for me tonight while I was getting everything ready. So I'm going to tell everybody they get five stars and we'll pick those out first and then they get to cut their straws and then they get a space pipe cleaner, which I found these at the dollar store. Um, in the holiday section. And then I found these at the, these at the dollar store too. I think these straws are from Target. The tray is from the dollar store too. And so they're just gonna cut, this, cut the straws, which they'll pop everywhere, which will be super, super fun. 
And yes, I do let everybody cut their own. And then if there's any extras, we'll just put them right here in the middle. Um, and then they can make their space bracelets, which will be really fun. And then another activity I have planned, we haven't done it yet, are um, finger painting um, planets. And I know some people do marble um, planets. Somebody asked me, on, I think on the name collages, if I let them cut their own. Um, that's a really great question. My friends who um, struggle with cutting, maybe they'll cut out like one or two squares and maybe I'll cut out the rest. Especially if a friend has a really long name, that could be really challenging for a three-year-old. So um, maybe I'll have them cut out just a couple of those squares or when they start to get tired or frustrated, then I'll cut out the rest. And I'm just in there with them. So um, I don't have them pre-cut. Um, so hopefully that answers your question. Thanks, Jennifer. I'm glad you love it. Um, and then here, so um, I just, I have my paints in um, squirter bottles, like those restaurant squirter bottles. And um, they'll get to pick three colors. And then they'll, they can finger paint the planet. And then I'll just glue it on a black piece of paper. So we'll have our, our planet art. And I know a lot of people do marble painting for space. And that would be really fun too. Um, and I did some assessments during Circle this week. We read Captain Invincible and the Space Shapes. And this book's about 3D shapes. But I really talked just about, I changed the words in the story. And I changed it to like square and circle. Um, because for my little guys. Um, and then afterwards, they went on a sh shape hunt around the library center. And they drew their shapes. And I'm just going to keep these for an assessment. So we went on a shape hunt, just like um, Camp the Invincible used his shapes to help him get home. And then I got an assessment done at the same time, so it's super fun. It's a really cute book. And then I read, um, so I did, we did this one on Monday, and then on Tuesday for Circle, we read, or today on Circle, we read On the Launch Pad. This is the cutest book ever. I think it's like one of my favorite space books. So it's like 10 engineers on their screen, and then it's got nine spotlights. And then it's got the dots, and then hidden in each picture are also the numbers. So they're, it's really fun. You can read this book a couple times. So it's got different things um, getting ready for launch. And then it's got numbers in it, so it's a um, counting book, and they're counting backwards. Or counting, yeah, counting backwards. And then after that, we went on a number hunt, and they wrote their numbers. And then I'm going to keep this. For an assessment too and i'm just going to put them in their um portfolios so yeah and it was really funny because a lot of my kids are like i can't write these numbers because numbers are so tricky right they're like super duper hard and i always said you know what? as long as you try i'm a happy teacher and it was really cute because they kept walking around going as long as i try i'm a happy kid it was like the cutest thing ever and then this is just a syllable sort game my my kindergartner <laughs> sorted them for me so he could you could see what it looks like so the, um, this is called aliens and or animals in space, and the it, all the animals have little astronaut helmets on, and you just count the syllables, and then they can sort them. So that's really fun. And then here are just some rocket rhymes: star and jar, spoon and moon. And then this is I'm really excited about this. Um, we're going to do this for small group, um, and I'm going to do my pre-K kids in one group and my three um, four-year-olds another group. So in this, I want I don't know if I can. There's letters in here. So I'm going to tell them I got some moon rocks and I, I hid magnet letters in them. So they have to find the magnet letters and then my, my three-year-old will just find them and talk about the letters and then we'll, we might write, write them on dry erase boards. But then for my pre-K kids, this is actually um, for another um, game in my science pack or my space um, math and literacy pack, but I'm gonna have my pre-K kiddos um, trace the letters. So, yeah, so we're gonna find some moon rock letters um, on Friday. And then they'll, it's, it's great fine motor too to unwrap all these little foil things. Mm -hmm. And then all the printable math, all the printable centers are all in my space math and literacy centers pack. And then here's just a um, space patterns game that's in my pack. So it's got all different kinds of patterns, and then they just put the cards on. And then I have a read, write, build. So they pick a letter, a magnet letter, 
and they read it N, and then they write it with a dry erase, and then they build it with these space or planet um, letters. And I also have um, this as a sight word game if you're a kinder teacher. Um, that's fun too. So, and there's lowercase letters in there too as well. And then I have space clip it. So they just, and I just put a whole bunch of green um, clips I had, and they just match the shape. This is a rectangle, and then they find the rectangle alien. Yeah. Kind of see them, and they just clip it on. Let's see if I can do this on well, with one hand. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they just clip it on there, and then they do this. And then here's some number puzzles, and you can see I have two levels. So this one just goes one to five, and then this one goes to ten. And there's two different ways. There, I have them in ten frames, and then I have them with numbers. And all right. Drum roll, please. Here's the dramatic plate center. So here is the space station. And this um, dramatic play one is a little bit more involved than my typical ones. Um, somebody asked, do you do all of the different activities at any time, even if you have not really worked on patterns? Yeah, I'll just give them the, um, if we haven't done patterns yet, then I'll just find the um, AB patterns and I'll, I'll just, Use it as a, as a way to um, introduce patterns. And I don't really do um, math units in my class. I just kind of, we kind of touch on all the, all the different concepts all year long. So we keep coming back to it, keep coming back to it. So I don't have everything out yet, because um, this is our first week. So next week, um, everything will be full. And then these space, um, space suits, I, whoa, sorry. I just, I, got, I found t-shirts at the dollar store. Let me see if I can put one out flat. There we go. You can kind of see it. So um, there's dry erase marker on there. Um, so I just um, went to the dollar store and I found some white t-shirts. Sorry, it's all folded. And then I put um, duct tape on them so we have space suits because they're so much cheaper than the ones you can buy in the store. So, yeah. so do it yourself DIY um, space suits for you there. And then here's our mural. <clears throat> so there's stars and I had um, on last Friday I had some of my kiddos help me make the stars that were ready um, to cut these out there weren't that many of them that were ready for this so um, just a couple of my friends did this and then we painted them with glitter paint and then I um sometimes I keep these from year to year so I had some in my bucket that kids had made so I um, went and put those up too and then Here's some, we actually finger painted the planets, kind of like the little ones. And then of course we added glitter because I am a glitter teacher. And this year I do two week themes. Typically, um, I have always done, for 11 years I taught in a public full day classroom. And this year I am doing my, um, I'm doing an in-home state accredited um, preschool and it's half day. So typically in my full day class, we, um, we, we did themes for um, four weeks. Um, three or four weeks, and this year I'm doing them for um, two weeks, so it's really a lot harder to fit stuff in. And I found on the Friday before we change themes, um, table time and sometimes small group, we spend making props for the next week, just because um, I need um, I need it open longer. I, when I had full day, I would keep it closed, pretend closed for about three or four days while we were getting everything ready. And let me tell you about these boards here really quick. So these are just those thick, they're like those thick form boards from the Dollar Tree. And then all these are printables in my Dramatic Play Space Centers pack. And these are just lids I just hot glued on. And these are reflectors from the um, hardware store. And there's some like, these are like reflector tape. And then I added numbers, which is in the pack too, just so I could add some math. And then on this board, um, there's a switch, and we hot glued it on. And then my husband, I don't know if you can see it, he um, helped me kind of like screw it in. And then these are just, um, these are lids, and those are like applesauce squeezer lids, and those are reflectors. And then this is just a like to-go lid. I got it from the Dollar Tree, and I put the earth underneath it. And then to add some literacy, I put just um, a keypad so they can pretend to type. And then these are um, 
handles from like a sink. And my husband did this for me. Let me see if I can show you in the back. He just put like a little piece of plywood and he drilled it in that way. So, but if you if you do drill it in, make sure you um, either um, cover the screws or make sure they're short enough so you don't have anybody sticking their fingers on that, on the, the screws. And then, so to add some stem and to get them, you know, because in space, it's kind of like, okay, let's drive the shuttle and then what? So they get to build, and I know I spelled launder, moon lander wrong. I have said, do you know I've said moon launder for like, as long as I can remember, I didn't realize it was moon lander, so I added a U in it. I know I'm a dork. So it's fixed in the pack, just not in my school. Yet. So these are just a dryer vent, and they stretch out. And then I have to put some pizza pans, and then I have just some cans, so they can build their different things for um in space. And this side's the moon. I don't know if you can see, but um, I put a tablecloth on the floor, and you can see there's holes like the moon just because um, they kind of made holes on accident. Um, so just so there's something else to do besides driving the space shuttle. And then here's some space parts they made so they can put those in for like engines or something. And that was really fun, fine motor. And then they can measure and then write down um, things about moon rocks some rocks and they can pretend to find them or we have the moon rock exploration box and these are just some gloves um, from Lowe's and then this is just a piece of lamination and then inside are rocks but you have to touch them like astronauts do using the gloves which they don't really like doing that <laughs> um, they think it's super frustrating which I understand so and then I used, um, I had, I have two boys that are a year apart, so I just busted out my old car seats that were expired and cut the straps out. So just ask some parents if you, they have some extra car seats, and then you can have space seats for your launch pad. Oh, let me show you one more thing. So I added a number, number three just to add some more math so they can call out what mission number it is. This is just a little hook. If they can put it on. And then these, they are loving, like I'm telling you guys, they love dry erase markers. Here. They, um, their flight plans, and they trace the different lines, and they, they'll sit in the chair and trace the lines and be like, oh look, we're going by the planet, or look, there's a, there's an asteroid going by. And you can tell, like, we've only had this open for two days, and they, like this, I think is their favorite thing, are the flight plans. And the keyboard. They love the keyboard. And then in my Discovery Center, I have, this is just that fish gravel that has the neon specks in it. And then these are just some um, uh, glow-in-the-dark stars. And then these are um, off Amazon. They have like astronauts. It's like a tub of them. And they have astronauts and moon landers or whatever. can't say that word or I've been saying it wrong forever. And then there's rocket ships in it. So they can pretend play um, and act out being an astronaut, or they can still just play in the rock. In the sensory table. And then I'm gonna swoop around. And oh, on my math shelf, I um these are just um erasers I found at Target. They're for a couple seasons ago, maybe. They're just rockets and aliens. And then so they roll the dice. And then they cover up that one. And they some of them play where they only cover it up once. And some, some of the kids play where they um, cover it up once. And then if they roll it again, they cover it up again. So it's really up to them how they want to play. And then this is just a, um, a number game that I made that's in my math. Both of these are in my Math and Literacy Space Centers pack. And we played, um, sometimes um, how I introduce the games, we'll play them for small group. Or we'll do them for table time. Or sometimes um, I'll show them the game really quick before we do centers. Um, or I'll maybe have it set up like this um, if I don't have time to introduce it. And then hopefully they'll, um, they can figure it out from there. So like I have the number and then a 10 frame and then a domino and the number again. 
and then the rocket. And these go to 20 in my pack, but I only put them, I think they only go up to 10 in here. Because otherwise it's just too many pieces for um, for them to manage right now. And it, it's too long of a game. My their, atten their attention span at the beginning of the year is just so, so short. So how I introduce centers is, um, I'll take you over there in just a second. And then um, let me tell you about blocks and then I'll go back to that. So here's the rest of that um, pack I bought. It's just got the the astronauts and more of the rockets and things. And I want to say it was like 20 bucks. But it has, there's a lot of pieces in here. I could even probably use this for um, another other games and things too. And then um, I have some challenges with some real pictures. I can build a space shuttle or I can build a rocket. And then I have um, empty spots and I hopefully they'll draw what they built. Um, I had one pre-K friend draw his and hopefully I can hang them up. So that way I left some space this time. And these are from my transportation um, stem I can build pack. So there's that. So that's why I have room. So hopefully they're going to build um, or draw their blueprints for me. And let me walk over here. Oh, I forgot to tell you one more thing. I have this game too in letters. And I only have it out, um, out to G right now. Um, if you if you were a kindergarten teacher, you could probably have half the alphabet or the whole alphabet out. Um, but they just do the letter and then uppercase and lowercase, and then it's a sound. And then these don't have anything on them. They're just blank because um, there's 27 letters or 26. It's a lot to do. So that way they just can plop this part on at the end. So that way if, if I introduce the number rocket build a game, hopefully they... Um, that way they'll know how to play this game too if I don't have time to introduce it before we play it. And then how I introduce centers, I'll tell you this really quick because I know this one's getting kind of long. So every day before we do centers, I, let me grab my bucket, sorry. So I, we all sit around my chart and then I go, okay guys, so today in, in Discovery, and I have a little baggie. And this is, I actually have this in my, my box to help me remember, my theme box, to help me remember um, what I put in the sensory table for different themes. So I just put it out um, as, for to introduce it. So I'd be like, okay, in Discovery, remember we have, let me zoom out a little bit, sorry guys. We have the rocks, and then in Library, we have the space writing paper, and the alien lacing cards, and the gears. My friends were not going to library at all, so I put a lot of fun things out in library this week to hopefully to get them to go to that center and experience some of those literacy games a little bit more. And then in, in I'll say like in blocks, we have the astronauts who can build space rockets and space shuttles. And then, oh, and in Discovery, we have the new math games. And here's my little alien friend. And then I... um. I don't know where my Play-Doh thing went and not like I maybe would have like something from the Play-Doh tray, like the marble, or you could even put the Play-Doh in a little baggie with some of the manipulatives and I would put that by the art center or maybe, oh, I know what it was. I had a cookie cutter in there and I used it for something else. Um, so that's how I introduce centers every day. So they remember um, what's in each center just so they don't get, um, you know, the room's so busy. They haven't been here in a couple days because I'm half day. So that way they remember um, what's in each center and maybe I can hopefully entice them to go to the, a different center that day and not just go to the same center every day because my kids pick their own centers every day and I don't have anything for pretend because um, they know it's a space station <laughs> like they're very excited about it <laughs> and I usually um that one is, is has been full a lot lately so all right friends so that is my space theme if you have any questions go ahead and plop that in the comments how do you get all that done in one day? I don't. Um, this year for half day, I'm not getting all these activities in. Um, so, and you know what? That's okay. That's why I'd, I um, I don't do the lesson plans because it's hard to fit everything in. Like you can see, like I haven't changed my science center yet because we just, we're not getting there. We're just not getting to that yet because we're still learning all those routines. And we're still working on green and red choices and things. So it's okay if you don't get to it all. But I just um, wanted to tell you guys all the different things you could do if you are full day and you would probably be able to fit it all in. So you guys have a great night. 
And don't forget, go join the Facebook group so you can um, talk about all things Packet of Preschool. And if you need any of these centers, go to my TPT store and grab them. Bye, guys.